In this video, I want to talk about some problems that are often encountered when using pattern editing mode in Adobe Illustrator and some ways of working around them. And this is artwork by my friend Terry Larson, really great pattern designer. And here is one of her beautiful designs, but unfortunately it's got this line running through it there. And this is happening because uh, these trees are transparent objects that brown, maroon um, circles are transparent. And so anytime they cross uh, the tile line um, or the bounding box of the swatch, they get this little line because it's almost where like two tiles are just butting up against each other. To me, it looks like it's a tiny bit of overlap and it might be so fine that you never see it in print, but it could also be a problem. So we're going to look at a way to work around that. And I also want to show another one of Terry's patterns. This one is another version of that, but oh, how gorgeous is this? I love the glowing gradients and the texture. And then unfortunately, you know, it's marred by one of those tiling lines there that's coming from the transparent objects that are crossing the border of the tile and have nothing solid behind them. But there's another issue with this pattern and that is that it has freeform gradients. So these trees here where you can see how beautiful and glowy um, they are, these are freeform gradients. And that's another type of content that doesn't work so well inside of pattern editing mode. And so when you bump up against several of these issues, transparency and freeform gradients, maybe this is a time to just build the pattern on the artboard where you don't have those limitations. And so that's what I'm going to demonstrate here with Terry's gorgeous art. So let's take a look at this. First, I just wanted to show you a very clear example. This is a pattern fill applied to a rectangle and you can see the lines all over it, right? where every tile meets every other tile. And we can look at this inside of pattern editing mode. I'll just double click on the fill swatch to open this up. And you know, sometimes you'll actually see it inside of pattern editing mode and other times you won't. But the problem is whenever you have a shape or anything that's transparent, that isn't solid, um, that crosses this line right here, either at the tile, if it's a grid or the swatch boundary, if it's, something like a half drop, uh, you'll see those lines there. And the only way to get around this really, I think, is to flatten transparency. And I'll put a link that I have to a video um, on how to flatten transparency in Illustrator. But basically what it would do is it would make all of this art into solid art and still preserve the look of all of these overlaps here. And that'll get you around the transparency problem here. Now the other problem is with freeform gradients. So let's just see what this art that is inside a pattern editing mode. This is one layer of the pattern with the trees. Uh, let's see what it looks like in outline mode. And you see all those X's. These are kind of like images. What happens when freeform gradients are expanded in Illustrator? And that happens automatically when you're using pattern editing mode. Certain kinds of content just don't work in pattern editing mode. And so you'll get that little pop-up warning that tells you they will be expanded when you exit. And so you're left with this. And so there is some transparency left here, but I mean, if I move this around with the white arrow, you'll see it's like there's a mask here. It's very confusing. Um, and then if I look inside of it and I go into the contents, let's see if I go to the group here, I can see there's that multiply blending mode applied. So it just makes art less editable and way more confusing. Let me go ahead and cancel out of here and just show you what the original art looks like. So what we have here, if I select this with my white arrow is art that's totally editable. I'll go and open up the gradient panel here and we can see the third type is highlighted. That's a freeform gradient. If I click on edit gradient, I get all of these nice little um, color stops where I can move them around and um, just, you know, it's still editable, which is wonderful. Let me undo that because I don't want to mess that up. So what I'm proposing here is that when you're working on a pattern that is containing content that's not compatible with pattern editing mode, or maybe there's just a lot of stuff in there that's making pattern editing mode run really slow, we've all, I'm sure, experienced that, then why not use pattern editing mode to mock up your pattern, to decide how it's going to repeat, and then use that as a guide and just build the art 
on the artboard where you don't have those limitations. So now I'm going to go through those steps of rebuilding a pattern on the artboard. So I'm setting up here and on the left, I have an artboard with the pattern fill swatch applied. And of course, looking at an outline mode, we can see it's a pattern fill swatch and there's that line in it. But this is just going to be a visual guide for me to compare to the artboard that I'm going to be working on here. And I've already measured, this is a 16 by 16 um, pattern that uh, if I drag the actual pattern fill swatch, that is applied to the art. And I come over here, zoom in and look at that bounding shape there. No fill, no stroke bounding shape that's inside of every pattern fill when you drag the artwork to the artboard. Um, I'm gonna see here when I click on it that it is 16 inches by 16 inches. So that is the size of the artboard um, that I've created. And then I've set it up here um, on layers to make it a little bit easier to work with. So on the bottom layer, I have the background of the pattern and it's right here. So I've got a solid background. I'm going to lock that on my 16 by 16 artboard. Then I'm going to take this art that I dragged away here. That is sort of like my formula or guide for this pattern. And let's go ahead and put it on a separate layer here called guide pattern. And then what I need to do is line up that bounding box with the corner of the artboard so that the bounding box and the artboard are lined up perfectly. And I'm just doing this by eye. There are other ways that I could do this and make it absolutely perfect, but I'm zooming in and I'm getting pretty close. I'm actually recreating this pattern. So, you know, I'm going to be able to control how perfect it is in the actual art. All right. So I've lined this up. I see that that bounding box and the artboard are the same. And so now what I'm going to do is just put a transparency setting on this, just dial it down enough so that I can see it, but it's not going to be too much in my way. And then I'm going to lock that layer and back out here. Then on the top layer, I have the art. So here's my copy of the art and I'm going to build this right here. So I'm going to get a little closer and zoom in here and then just start lining this up. You can see there's a bird, an orange bird there, and a yellow bird there. Um, and I'll zoom in. And again, I'm just doing this by eye, but I know that I can make this um, perfect all the way across. All right, so now I have the first motif aligned up with the pattern that was created in pattern editing mode. And I'm going to go into my preferences. That's Commander Control K. And here under keyboard increment, I'm going to change this to 16 inches and you could change it to eight, whatever makes sense um, for the art that you're working on. But I know that um, I need this corner and this corner and this corner and this corner to be identical. So I'm going to go copy paste in front, commander control C, commander control F, and then nudge 16 inches down. Then again, commander control C, commander control F, Nudge that, same thing over here, nudging it up once. All right, so my corners are now covered. That's great. Now I'm gonna zoom in here and it's going to repeat. So I'm going to use the Option or Alt key to drag copy while holding down Shift to drag it in a straight line like that. And then here I can zoom in. Again, I'm gonna hold down on Shift just to get it fairly closely aligned there. It looks right. It looks like it matches the art. The most important thing though, is to make sure that this and this are the same. So I'm going to copy this, paste in front, and then nudge that one over. Now I just need to fill in the center column and the art that's right here is the same as the art that's here. So I'm just going to option drag a copy out there. And again, aligning this by eye, like that. Okay. And now because it's crossing this edge of the tile there, I need to copy paste in front, nudge it down 16. And then for the middle, I'll do the same thing. Just holding down option or alt to drag out a copy and holding shift to keep that copy, you know, perfectly vertical. Again, I'm going to hold shift 
to move this down vertically. Um, and I see a little spot right up here I'm going to take care of, but let's just see if I flip this on and off. You know, if I actually turn this back up to 100, I could probably see that even better. But just sort of flashing layers off and on like this will just tell you if anything's moving. <laughs> so that's helpful. If you see something moving, it's out of alignment probably. Now I want to take care of what looks like just a little spot right there, a little open gap. So I'm going to copy some artwork. Um, copy, paste it in front and nudge it up. And now when I zoom in, you know, before... There was no stem there and now or no tree trunk there and so now it's crossing um that line just like it is down here so hopefully that will take care of that okay so now what i want to do that's on the art layer and then i'm going to turn off the guide pattern layer and i might eventually delete that and then we're going to get the texture that goes on top so this is a texture overlay that is a repeat pattern fill and let's go ahead and get that. I know that I need this to be 16 by 16. So I'll go ahead and get my rectangle tool and make a 16 by 16 square. And let's align it to the artboard. And I can apply the pattern fill to it, the linen pattern. And it is pretty large scale right now, but I know that she was using it at a percentage so I'm going to go ahead and add that here in the appearance panel so with that fill selected I can see right here is the pattern fill it's hard to see because it's white um, but that is a pattern fill there um, and then I'll just add let's see a distort and transform transform and let's do this 25 percent there and it's got transform objects, but not patterns. Let's go ahead and check on patterns. So you can see that's a very fine mesh and then uncheck transform objects so that I have that 16 by 16 there. Now that I have scaled this, I'll click OK and I'm going to apply a transparency setting that she used. Normal, let's see, it is an overlay and it's at 30%. which makes this really nice and glowy. All right, so let me zoom in here and that looks lovely. Now the one thing that I wanna do is extend this pattern overlay past the border of the artboard. Since this is gonna be the edge of the tile, it's nice to have a little bleed there. Um, it helps with those pattern tiling lines, a whole other subject um, that sometimes happens. But I don't, you know, if I just scale this rectangle to make it bigger, the pattern will scale too. And I don't want to do that. I've already set it up so I know this is a repeating pattern fill here. So I'm going back to my preferences, Command or Control K, and uncheck Transform Pattern Tiles here. And that way I can scale this rectangle without scaling the pattern. So I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key that's going to scale this from the center and the shift key to keep it proportional and just give myself a little extra overlap bleed there that goes over the edge of the artboard. All right, and because I held option, I was doing that scaling from the center, so we did that all the way around the art, and now I can go ahead and export this. So I'm gonna go up to File, Export, Save for Web, and here inside Save for Web, I can change the dimensions here. So this is a 16, I'm using my calculator, 16 inch square artboard, and I'm gonna multiply that times 150 PPI. That is the spoon flower resolution, which equals 2400 pixels. So I'll go ahead and type that into the size here and let it resize. Now, right now it's a JPEG, very high, so that's probably good. You could also choose to make this a PNG 24. I'm gonna leave it as a JPEG right now and then click save. All right, so I've opened it up in Photoshop and I'm gonna do a quick preview by going to view, pattern preview, and this will tile out the pattern and that way I can look and see if I see any tiling lines 
there at the edges. And it looks great. So building your pattern on the artboard gets around some of the limitations of pattern editing mode, but you can still use pattern editing mode to do what it's great for, which is tiling things out and letting you design in real time and see your updates happen as you move your motifs around. One of the things I really love about Terry's work, and it's something that I strive to do in my work too, is just the fact that you can have so few lines and do something so simple like this, but just something that radiates personality, which her work really does. And I just <laughs> love these birds. So thank you, Terry Larson, for letting me demonstrate with your beautiful artwork. I hope this is a helpful tutorial to my audience and let me know what you think in the comments. And also I'll be putting a link so you can look at more of Terry's work. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Illustrator online on lauracoylecreative.com. Thank you for watching.